do you always create the same kind of composition in your artwork? If you want a fun exercise to come up with new compositions, then keep watching. Hi there, I'm Janine, I'm an artist and I share my creative journey on this channel. I've noticed lately that a lot of my work uses the same kind of compositions. Looking at traditional compositions for inspiration, like an L-shaped composition, an S-curve or a triangle composition for example, feels a bit too restrictive for me. There are many ways to come up with your own compositions, but my favourite way is taping off squares and then painting over everything at once. You might have seen me do this on a large scale in one of my previous videos, but today I don't really feel like getting out a big sheet. I simply want to play in my sketchbook. It's actually been a while since I started this page, so I taped up a bunch of squares with masking tape and then did a first layer with acrylic gouache actually. But I've decided to switch to acrylics now, just normal acrylic paints. And you can see the tape's already gone quite wrinkly, but I'm sure it'll be fine. It's only in my sketchbook. So I'll start with this catalyst wedge and maybe some orange today. And I'm sort of trying to ignore the tape lines. This is a makeup brush. I haven't used this before. This is one I bought in Poundland. It's got weird things sticking out. Hair sticking out. Oh well. So this is only a cheap one. Don't use your expensive makeup brushes. I mean, you can if you want to. Um, and I'm assuming that this is going to make a really soft edge. So let's try that. I'm just going to wet it a little bit and dab off all the excess liquid. It's not super wet and mix a little color oh yeah this makes really interesting gentle strokes probably do with being a little bit more wet it's probably too wet now but we'll go with it i'll use this round brush something a little more reddish And you see it's quite difficult for me to ignore the tape because I keep on wanting to go only in one square, which of course is fine if that's what you want to do. But I feel like it's it's a little bit more unpredictable once you decide to ignore the tape. But I'm generally doing a little bit of both. And I'll go over with something a little bit lighter. Some white here. I could mix into some of this. It's very light. Let's use some more white. Oh, there's already quite a lot going on. I'm tempted to try another one. Maybe a smaller one while this dries. And I'm not doing this very accurately, I'm just eyeballing it. I think I want to use some of my Neo colours for this one. So I'll start with that. I'll just wash over that with some water. Maybe some light colour next. I find it a little bit more difficult now that it's a long format rather than this one where it's more of a square page and it's easier to get to all the squares in a shorter, in a small space. Whereas here I have to go from one end to the other, whereas there isn't much to go this way. I think I have to use this scraper again. I'm gonna get some more of this turquoise. Might even pop it right onto the page. Ok, 
a little bit more water. I'll go back in with some Neo Color and I'm just really playing with the materials because I can't really predict the end result anyway. Actually some of this paint is still quite um, wet so I could scratch into it with something like this colour shaper. This is a really nice one but I've since learned that you can just get, um, what are they? Silicon um, pottery kind of tools on Amazon or somewhere like that for quite cheap. But I haven't tried those myself. I've only ever tried this one. It's getting very murky now. So I would like some more light colour. Don't want it too white. More like a creamy colour. quite impatient and I want to take off the tape now. If you like this video, consider subscribing. Just checking if I want to do anything else on this. I think I might just take the tape off and see what it looks like and I can always work on top of it afterwards. Right, moment of truth. And I always love the tape that comes off and I often keep that in my sketchbook. And then you end up with loads of cute small compositions. I actually really like those, especially this one here. It's got the bold colour and then mainly neutral colours. I really love the colours in this actually. I don't tend to go for a lot of red, but this is really nice. And then also this one, where it's kind of like a triangle here and one here, and even this is a bit like a triangle shape. I like that. This is quite interesting where this really big dark and then this more organic shape and here where it's just like a gentle brush stroke and quite a lot of contrast but also saturation here but like a little dot of saturation of the orange here i like the kind of stripiness and then the way that stripiness is broken up with this blob very cool i think this could be a good inspiration for if you like to prepare your compositions before you move on to larger work. It's not typically the way I work, but this is a good way of coming up with new compositions that you probably wouldn't have thought of. And time to take this off as well. Now it leaked a lot underneath the tape here. I think it's because this paper is rougher than the one from the other sketchbook. The other sketchbook is quite smooth. Also, I think this sketchbook has two sides, one good, gooder, one good side and one that's more the back. Sure, actually, because that's smoother. I do prefer the other ones, maybe because the colours are, well, it's, they're just a little bit simpler. These have gotten quite murky. Now, I was wondering if I could maybe work on top of these a little bit. Like here, that could be with, could do with lightening quite a bit. Might not make it better, but it's an experiment. And here as well, because this is almost the same value as this. So I'll see if it gets better for light than this. Where else could I lighten it a bit? Here, probably. I'm also not keen on this squiggly shape and the way it's kind of dividing it right through the middle here I want to lighten this little corner here as well it's kind of covered right in the middle Good. 
continue it over there a little bit. Here, I'll see if I can add a little bit more. This is a little bit more saturated than this brown here. That's already there. Let's see if that makes it a little bit more interesting. Cool. It's a little bit better than they were before, but I still prefer these here. I think these could be really good inspiration for composition. And these who knows might one day also inspire something. No matter what scale you do this exercise at, I always find the results surprising. You can use this exercise to create finished pieces of art, or you can just use it as an exercise like I did today. I really hope this has inspired you to come up with new compositions. And if you want to see me do this on a large scale, then you can watch that video up here. Thanks and bye bye.